Here, I have a Dell Precision T3630 workstation that come with an Intel Xeon E2124 and 16GB ECC RAM. Although this PC is pretty old, it can still handle daily tasks. I'm looking to improve its performance and give it a fresh new look. So I've decided to change the case and add some ARGB fans to enhance airflow and aesthetics. For this case swap project, I have the Deepcool McCube 110 Limited WH MATX case. Let's open the box and take the case out to see what it looks like. As you already know, the Dell Precision T3630 is a case with very restricted airflow and CPU temperatures are normally high. I plan to use this case to overcome the limitations of upgrading CPU fans and case fans, ultimately improving overall performance. This case is truly unique because it comes with a white outside and black inside design. What's even more amazing is that I bought this case for just $35. Now let me grab the motherboard from the Dell Precision T3630. As you can see, the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard is a standard MATX motherboard which conveniently features the 24-pin ATX power supply connector this makes it easy to install in any standard case. Let's remove the CPU cooler and clean the thermal paste. The Dell Precision T3630 motherboard uses a proprietary CPU backplate that is combined with the CPU and CPU cooler mounting bracket. To install a standard CPU cooler, I need to replace this backplate with a standard one. And here, I have an ASRock mining motherboard that's still working, but it's not currently in use. I will exchange the CPU backplate with the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard's backplate. Now that the CPU backplate is removed, let me grab the CPU backplate from the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard. To remove the CPU backplate, we need a hexagonal screwdriver. I will install the CPU backplate that I grabbed from the Dell Precision T3630 onto the ASRock motherboard and I'll use the standard backplate for the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard. The standard CPU backplate is installed on the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard. It looks like a fully standard motherboard. Here, I have an EK120 AIO CPU cooler with an ARGB fan and pump, and I'll be installing it in the new case.
Now let me install the AIO mounting brackets onto the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard. Now I'm installing the Crucial P3 Plus NVMe SSD, which has a capacity of one terabyte onto the motherboard. Here I have the Dell Precision T3630 motherboard IO shield. The I.O. shield is not removable, so I went to a used computer warehouse and bought a broken Dell Precision T3630 just to grab this I.O. shield by cutting it out from the case. Sounds serious, right? Now let's install the motherboard into the PC case. The motherboard size and the screw holes fit perfectly with the PC case. For the thermal paste, I'm using the NZXT High Performance Thermal Compound for this PC build. Now let's install the AIO pump. The AIO pump is secured with the four thumb screws. Now let's install the radiator into the case. As for the power supply, I'll be using the original one that came with the Dell Precision T3630. I want to keep costs reasonable for this project. Here, I have two Jonesboro ARGB 120mm case fans. I bought each fan for $5. Since the top area of this case is white, let's install these white ARGB fans on the top. For the front of the case, I will install three ID cooling ARGB 120mm fans. I purchased this set of three fans for $29 quite some time ago, and I haven't been using them for a while. Now, let's put them all to work. Let me connect the case cables, including the USB, front audio, front I.O. buttons, 24-pin cable, and 4-pin CPU power cable to the motherboard. For the front I.O. buttons, there are labels for each pin, numbered from 1 to 9. Here's a little trick. If we use a regular power button, the system might show a power button failure alert. To fix this, I've connected a cable from any grounded point in the PC 
to pin number 9 on the front I.O. button header. Here's the case open close sensor. I need to install this sensor to let the PC know that the case side panel is always closed. Here, I have a 1 to 10 PWM fan hub. This kit will allow me to add as many fans as I need to the PC case. And all those fans will be powered by a SATA power cable and controlled by the PWM signal from the motherboard fan header. To light up all ARGB fans in this PC case, use a Johnsbo ARGB controller device. I connected the ARGB switch with the reset switch button on the case so that I can change the ARGB effect by pressing the reset switch button. Now let me connect all the fan and ARGB cables to these devices. Let me do some cable management. Now I connect the AIO pump cable to the CPU fan header and the fan hub cable to the case fan header on the motherboard. Let's install the graphics card. In this case, swap. I will install an RTX 2070 Founder Edition GPU for gaming and daily tasks such as Photoshop and CapCut video editing. The RTX 2070 is still a great GPU that can play most games at 1080p with ray tracing and DLSS support. GPU is installed, let's connect the 8-pin PCI cable to the GPU. Yeah, it's almost done. Let's put on the side panel and the front bezel. And here's what the final result looks like. Let's power on the PC. Wow, it looks amazing. That's great. It booted directly into Windows without any warnings. It seems my implementation is all correct. Let's try to change the RGB effect by pressing the reset button. It's really nice and cool. It's mind-blowing that a small device, smaller than my finger, cost me $3, can control all of these RGB devices.
let's take a look at the PC specs. Here we have the Intel Xeon E2124, a 4-core, four 4-thread four processor installed. The motherboard chipset is Intel C246, and it's paired with dual SK Hynix 8GB modules, totaling 16GB with ECC. As for the GPU card, we have the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Founders Edition right here. Let's run the CPU stress test. With the EK 120mm AIO cooler, the maximum CPU temperature is around 60 degrees Celsius, which is a great temperature for running the PC all day long. According to the Fermark GPU benchmark, the NVIDIA RTX 2070 temperature is not ideal. The hotspot reaches up to 90 degrees Celsius. Perhaps this GPU is quite old and was previously used for mining purposes for an extended period. As this PC is an Intel Xeon-based system, it is not primarily used for gaming. Now, let's test exporting an HEVC 4K 30fps video clip that is one minute long. Here I'm using CapCut. Now I'm going to export this video. For the video codec, I've selected HEVC H265 and the resolution is 4K with 30fps. It's not bad. The export video speed, based on the 4K video resolution, is quite fast. Now let's benchmark this PC to see how it runs games. For my final thoughts, doing a case swap on the Dell Precision T3630 was absolutely worth it for me. With a small budget spent on the case and ARGB fans, less than 100 US dollar, I achieved a very good looking modern PC that gives me a fresh look and feel. However, since this Intel Xeon based system is not primarily a gaming PC, I didn't see significant improvements in gaming FPS. Next time, I might consider adding an Intel Core i9-9900 paired with an RTX 3070 to upgrade this Dell Precision T3630 case-swapped PC. That way, I can unlock its full potential as a 1440p gaming rig with an aesthetic appeal while still being budget conscious. I appreciate you watching my video. If you found something you liked in this video, please consider liking and sharing it. And if you'd like to share your opinion, feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.